Hello, hi everyone. This is Christian. So today we're going to look at a very important pattern called singleton. So a singleton is really just a design pattern that uh, supposedly guarantees a uh, a single copy or a single instance creation from a class or from a function. So uh, the idea of a singleton is to provide that inst that single access point to your entire application, or if you want to share that. Um, you know, access point across multiple uh, servers or, uh, or um, programs. So in today's example, I will be doing a JavaScript example using a DB connection as a singleton. So like you see in this diagram here, for example, when you want to make a database connection, in my example, I'll be doing a DB connection to the Mongo database. So you can see how this can be useful. In this example, you see that we have a database here. And in your program, you can create three or four or five instances of a DB connection. We're using a class in this example here. So this is a non-singleton example. When you create an instance of that, you have a copy of the DB connection class that will connect to the same database. And more than likely, you might even connect or load the same you know, uh, collections and data and so forth. So instead of having, you know, multiple versions or copies of these instances, you would do something like this, right? And this is where Singleton becomes extremely useful and powerful. So you have a single connection uh, class that connects to your database. And when you make a new connection, like you see here is exactly how I do here, you can have many instances sort of like that. I mean, your statement will look like that, but then the DB connection is only one connection. So in a way, they all share the same resource, right? And a, other languages like Java or C++ or whatnot, where you have a multi-threaded language, you also can do something similar. Uh, here's an example of that as well. This example here is for a multi-threaded language such as Java. Now, you want to make sure that your DB connection is also thread safe. But if it's not thread safe, I mean, if you don't synchronize them, you're going to end up having multiple copies of this connection that will look very similar to this example. So here we have, if, if I have like N threads and they all make DB connections, and you can see that if you're not careful, you have multiple copies of that connection as well. And the four, you know, leads to, uh, you know, polluting the data space and uh, memory leakages and so forth. So again, the idea is to synchronize your connection. So you end up having something very similar to this. So your threads will be sharing the same connection and so forth. Okay, so for our example, what is something that will mimic this example connecting to a database? But first, let's see a few examples of what a singleton will look like. So now I'm going to create a, um, a uh, singleton.js. And we're going to create a very simple example just to show you what that look like. And this will be a non-singleton, okay? Um, let's put here a non Singleton. So uh, version, I'm going to create a constant. Let's say we call it non-singleton. I use a, let's create an if you function, okay? So I can book it right away. Let's do that right here. And it's a function um, that takes no parameters. So inside the function here, I'm going to create a constant. Uh, let's say create instance. Right. And arrow functions. And in here, I'm going to return an object. Let's say we have a name property as the name of um, a Goofy. And I probably must spell correctly, but that's okay. Okay. So I'm going to return this object back. Um, and also, I'm going to have another return statement here. We'll also return a function for get. It's a getter, right? Get instance. And I will assign to a function. Again, this will be just create the instance. Okay, so that is a very simple function uh, to do that singleton example. So now let's say I'm going to create a couple instances. So I call instance one is going to be non singleton dot get instance. Okay, I would do three of them for this example. 
Let's do two and three. Now, this is a non-singleton, by the way. So therefore, when you create this, these instances, you're going to get an object coming back, right? Um, here or here. This is for a, a, just a getter. Um, whoop, I have a typo here. I can't put a semicolon. It's a getter. So I'm going to basically return an object. Now, remember the objects are, uh, you know, reference variables or objects. They are not always, you know, the same because they're retaining their own separate memory spaces. So therefore, I'm going to compare and um, see if they're equal or not. So you can use instance one is equal to instance of two. Okay, I'll do another one here. Instance of two is equal to, I'm doing a strict type just to make sure they're all the same type and so forth. Okay, so for example, let's just do that. let's say I have that and I'm gonna run it now. And you're gonna see, hopefully, you see that when I can do the comparisons, they are indeed false and that's what you expect, right? Objects are not always, it cannot be equated because they're not of the same copy, okay? And just to illustrate this a little bit further, I mean, just, you know, there's just example of like how objects are. So let's say I have the instance one and I'm gonna change the name property to, um, let's say download doc, right? Okay. If these share the same instance, then therefore I change one property, the all should be changed as well. And just to see how that works, I'm gonna do a, um, I'm gonna console log the instance property of this, um, instance of two, and then instance of three. Okay, and let's try around this again. Okay, so you see that now, right? We test that they are indeed false. And then I changed the first one, the first instance to download doc, but the second and the third still unchanged. So you can see that these are not singleton, right? We have three separate objects um, that use the same, uh, in this case, function to generate that example. So how do we change this to a singleton? And this is a very simple example. So I'm gonna change this to a singleton. I'll keep the name as is, that's okay, just for you know brevity. Um, I wanna, you know what, maybe let me, let's do this. Let's copy all of this here. And we'll turn all these off. And we'll just put it down here just so that I don't want to mess up the code up. Well. So this will be a singleton. And I'll change the you know function to singleton. And so uh, the, the demonstration however, will be the same. It's just the inside will be different. The only difference you can do here is basically this right here when you call the create instance here. Now I don't want to create a new object every time. So what you do is you check to see if there is a local variable or local property that has existed. And what we need to do is we need to create a local variable here, let's call it instance. And then we need to set the instance when we load this function. So that means that if the instance, when we call this get instance function, we check to see if the instance is you know, created or not. So you can say if instance is not created, then we're going to set the instant equal to that creation. Otherwise, we just basically return the instance back. So you can see that now it's either we create a new instance or we return the current one. And just by doing that tiny change, you make this into a singleton. So now, for example, if I run it again, you're going to see that they all have similar data, right? So when I compare them, they're all true because they're indeed true, right? If A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C, right? Uh, and then here I change the name from uh, Donald Doc from Goofy to Donald Doc, and they all have been changed to Donald Doc. Okay, so this is a single term. Now let's do something a little bit more practical. I'm gonna go over here and create a new variable. Let's call it server. Now I'm gonna do a MongoDB example here, okay? Um, so that we have a little bit more practical in, in this in this sense. So again, I'm gonna do a, a non-singleton first so we can see what that's like. And before I do that, I also want to um, go to my terminal and install, let's do a npm init. <clears throat> do environment first, I'm gonna create a, um, uh, okay, I'm do a npm install. Uh, MongoDB, okay, I'm gonna install that driver. And once I install that driver, I'm gonna go ahead and create my connection here. So it's, again, this is the uh, non-singleton, okay? Uh, and I'll use a class in this example. So I have a, first I need to import, um, let's, let's, yes, 
constant in Mongol client. Okay, this is coming from, okay, the uh, MongoDB. Okay, I grab the client. And then I'm going to have a class. I'll call it uh, DB connection. Inside this class, I'll have a constructor that takes no parameters, but then I set a property called this client as equal to null. And I'm going to spell that correctly. Okay, also I want to have a connection. Remember, you connect to MongoDB, you have to connect asynchronously. So I'm going to create a, um, a sync called connect. And this would be uh, connecting to a MongoDB. So you do a const uh, for your I equals to MongoDB. Uh, it's going to be uh, localhost. Again, use 127.0.1 instead of localhost to prevent any uh, conflict um, recognition because some browser for well, MongoDB doesn't like that. Localhost, I mean, don't use localhost. That's what I'm trying to say. And again, I'm going to have a uh, this client, which is the client above, I'm going to be set to a new um, Mongo client, connect to the URI, new connection. And then I'm going to await this, I'm going to await this connection. This, which is the current uh, object client, which is this client up here, right? This client, I'm going to do a connect. Connect that right away, asynchronously. And let's do a log just to make sure we have some information here. Let's say create, um, create a new uh, MongoDB connection. We get that message so we can see. And then finally, we're gonna return this, this client. Okay, so that is our connect. And then we'll do um, two more function here is to get the database name, something you know we might wanna use. So let's say get DB. Um, DB name, and then we're going to do a, um, uh, so let's see if I want to make sure this is right. If I do a DB connection, yeah, so I want to make sure that um, if the client is installed, so I'll click if this client is, this client, okay, is present, not present, I put the not there. And I'm just doing a simple error. Okay, throw a new error. Um, and I'll call it uh, capital E. Uh, MongoDB client is not initialized. So just like that, a message that you know, <clears throat> you want to call it first, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And else, we don't think else. If it's through errors, it stops there. So basically, <clears throat> let's return this uh, client that DB and then the DB name. Okay, so we turn that database. And finally, we're gonna close the database as well. So we have a close function that is simply, again, you wanna check to see if this client is already there or not. If it is, then this that client will close. And then we, also set to no, reset it. And then we'll just log a message again to the console, say Mongo DB uh, connection close. Okay, so um, that's that. So that is our uh, uh, DB connection, okay? So let me just remove this. So we have a client connection here and hopefully this is correct. So now how do we use it is down here. So here is the um, usage. So I'm gonna create a, um, um, again, you can, how we do this is fine. You can call it separately. I, I'm gonna, basically just gonna do a, a um, iffy function, okay? You call it right away. And here you would do like a sync uh, function and it will get fired right away. So what do we do here? I need to have a constant uh, instance one, kind of similar to the one we just did. It's gonna be a new DB connection, a new class instance. And then we're gonna have um, a client one. This is the connection, right? You're gonna await the uh, instance one dot connect. <clears throat> okay, so we call this connect. 
function asynchronously. Once you do that, then we're going to get the database. So we have db1 is going to be instance one dot fdb. I'm going to pass in here a test db. So make sure you have your Mongo database installed and running. I think I do have my, I'm using my compass. You can see I have a test and I'm using a user's collection. They have two users in here, Goofy and Donald Duck, for example. And I'm going to see this data actually get pulled to the program. Okay. <clears throat> so my test is that is that one. And I also get a collection. We call it collect one. It's going to be the db1 dot um, collection, right? And they want to have the collection called users. Once I made the connect collection, and then now I'm going to do these operations here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to get a result. So result one is going to be a wait again. Every time you do a collection, uh, like using the find or insert or delete or whatnot, all this function, you make sure you use the wait because it's going to take some time to you know, access the database and come back. If you don't do that wait, you're going to get a no or none empty result. So I'm looking for, you know, empty object, get everything here. When data comes back, I want to convert it to array. And that's what you get. And then I'm going to log to the console. So we can see the data here, which is, again, in this case, will be sorry, documents um, from instance one, okay? One. And then we'll put here the result one. Okay, so that is the first connection. And again, just to illustrate the non-singleton version, I'm going to copy, uh, um, let's see, instance one, instance two. Yeah, I'm going to do a copy of this, the same thing. Go down here. This is instance two. I'm going to change all this to two. So you can see that uh, the non-singleton, I'm calling the same database, by the way. So that's that. And of course, in this example here, um, oh no, no, not climb. Sorry, here should be uh, connect. Connect here. I need to connect here. Okay, connect, connect. I'm not using my client here uh, for some reason, which is, um, I guess it's fine. If you want to use it for something else, that's fine. Um, otherwise, I'm just basically connect the instance one to the client, and we'll just leave it there for now. I, I don't have any use for client two now, I think. But I want to, I don't want to see what it looks like. If there's any error, it will show me the error. Otherwise, you will see some result on the bottom here. So you can see that now down here, I have two versions, right? So the first version, make a connection, and I return the result one right here. You get the data back, and then you print it out to the console. My second instance is down here. I should have put instance two here, by the way, like this. So that is the same, it's the second one. Let's do it again. Let's clear this console and run it one more time. So here we go. The first connection is right here. Okay, we make a connection, we got the data back. And then the second connection, we got the data back. Now, how do we know if they are the same or not, right? So I want to make sure I want to test these in the code. So right down here, when I do the operation, I'm going to check, check to see a, I'm going to do a console log to see if um, our client, I'll check the client one is equal to client two. Okay, we we'll just do right here. So client one is equal to client two. I do something similar to the other example here. If that's correct, then that should be correct. I also want to instantly close my connection here. I have two of them, so make sure you close both of them. Okay, so we go again. Let's clear the console here and run. Okay, so you see the data comes back normally. You can see that when I check them, right, they are indeed separate connections. Therefore, they are not singleton. It is separate objects. If I create a third connection, it's going to be the same as before. And just to make sure it is correct, I can change this to the equal equality as opposed to the strict type. And hopefully, it will get the same result. As you can see, this still false. Okay, so this is a singleton example. 
how do we, I mean, non-singleton example, how do we change this to a singleton? It's actually quite simple uh, to do that. You just basically uh, modify a few things up here. So the code down here will be the same as it is. And since I'm gonna use a singleton, I'm not going to create an instance close again here, right? It's redundant, I'll leave it for now, but let's go back up here and create this example. Here. Um, I'm gonna turn this error off. I just copied it earlier. Um, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna save this and I will duplicate this, okay? So we have a different copy and I will leave that as um, server two for now as is. So the server two, which is the singleton, this will be a singleton class. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Again, I don't need to have this DB here for some reason. Uh, when I type it, it actually got pulled over. I don't need that here. Okay, so this singleton version, everything here remains the same. Most of them remains the same. All we need to do is we need to check the client. We don't want to set it to no when we instantiate this class. So you want to check to see if um, the client, because when you create this, the client a property is already created or not. Before that, you know, so we can check something like if the DB connection, uh, I keep uh, mistyping that. So it keeps adding this directly from the MongoDB. I don't want that, okay? MongoDB connection dot instance. I'm gonna create an instance variable, which in this case, I don't have in the non, uh, a singleton version, right? There's no instance variable here. So I'm going to instance variable. This is sim similar to the singleton we have here, this instance here, okay? So we'll create an instance variable. If this one here exists already, then all I'm going to do is going to return a DB connection dot instance. May just return it. And therefore, don't create an instance object. All right? No, actually, I, I do create, um, I do create, yeah. If it is, then I return that and I'm done. If it if it's not there, then I'm gonna create that no. And then now I'm gonna do a um, DB connection that instance. I set the instance to this, okay? Which is this connection. That is a difference. This part here and this line right here. Down here, I'm gonna do the same things as above. I also wanna check to see if the client has already been established, kind of similar to this part down here. Okay, so I do like if this client doesn't exist, has not been established, then go ahead and make the connection just like um, just like this. Okay, return it separately. I'll just return it no matter what, right? Else, then basically do nothing about it. Don't make the connection again. So you're not gonna get another uh, copy. So here you can just you know omit it as long as you can see that we're using um, existing uh, connection. So we have an idea that it is using that connection. Oh, my fingers are not so good today. Okay, so I check to see if it's already been established. If it is, ignore this connection and just go right to else clause and then return this client. That is one change. And then down here again, I mentioned earlier, you don't need to close this again because again, they are the same instance. So it's just repeating, right? So now let's see what this looks like. Okay, I'm gonna run again. Okay, so you now you see that my connection data is working as before. Got the data back for instance one, instance two, just like before. But the important thing is down here, when I check my clients, right, one and two down here, they're indeed of the same type, as you can see. Therefore, I have created a singleton connection to my database. Again, just to make sure this is correct, I can check a straight type just to confirm that it is still the same type. And you can see that it is also true. Okay, so I hope this is helpful to, you know, help you establish or create singleton for your applications, a very common uh, approach if, of course, you know, database connection. Uh, also, you can create like configuration for your application. Imagine you're writing a game and you configure your app. So just do one place. You don't want to do many, many, many configurations. All right. Well, thank you. And if you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video.